What's up, fam? If we don't know each other yet, that is absolutely tragic. And we should change that. My name is Jess. I'm the owner of Dolls in Training and the creator of the BBL Encyclopedia and the Travel Surgery Journal. I am completely committed to helping dolls like you prepare from surgeon to snatched, from consultation to compression, and everything in between. If you've watched all my videos, checked out all the content on my socials, and all the free resources on my website, you still have questions, hit me up. I'd love to connect with you. My goal is to make sure that you're totally educated and go into surgery with a peaceful mind. So say hi. Okay, today's video has me a little riled up. <laughs> so I'm gonna do my best to keep it as neutral and professional as I possibly can, which if you've been following me for a while, you know is extremely difficult for me. So today's video is about the stage three Faha, and it's gonna be heavily based on opinion considering the title, is it worth it or is it a waste? Um, but it also will contain a lot of my experience. So I'm gonna do my best to merge the two in a way that is fully educational and helps you better prepare to make your own decision. I really am tired of seeing it. Nothing burns me up more than misinformation in the community. And sometimes when I come across Faha companies or garment manufacturers, I wonder if anyone who works there ever had surgery. I think first, before we dive into like whether or not the garment is worth it or a scam, it's important to mention that it's really critical that you go back and watch all of my other Faha videos before you watch this one. You need to have a holistic view of the entire journey. And the entire journey includes many more stages or phases before you get to stage three. So head back to my channel. There is the first one, which is basically a Faha 101 video, and it's the ultimate Faha education. Second one is all about stage one, demos, Q&A. The second is on stage one and a half, which is a really crucial phase in your journey. And a phrase that I coined in response to and as a solution for that little purgatory kind of like limbo phase before you receive your stage two garment. Of course, there's a video on stage two. And here we are in the final fifth video of the five video series, stage three. Some professionals in the surgery community will lead you to believe that your recovery is complete at three months post-op. And that is so far from the truth, it's not even funny. In my experience, in my personal experience, my results did not even start to become evident until three months post-op. And the inches did not start melting off my waist until like nine, 10, 12 weeks post-op, that's three months. Yeah, that's three months. My swelling did not start to drastically decrease until well after six months post-op. And the numbness around my midsection from the lipo did not subside until well after nine months post-op. And so because I was still experiencing swelling, I was still experiencing numbness, and I was still losing inches well past six months post-op, that's a pretty good indication that your body is still in recovery mode from that surgery that you had, in my opinion, in my experience. Additionally, all of that stuff kind of came to a screeching halt right around my one year post-op mark. It's really difficult for me to wrap my head around the fact that garment companies actually and literally catering to customers who had surgery are putting charts up on their website that say ready for stage three by six weeks post-op. And then they stop at 12 weeks. So it's like some charts will say like 
zero to three weeks, you know, three to six weeks, stage two, and then six to 12 weeks, stage three. And I don't want you to write any of that down if you're the one that has the pen and paper out, if you're the one that has the travel surgery journal, if you're like taking notes while you're watching my videos, because I was that chick. I know I have a ton of followers who are that chick. Um, please ignore the chart that I just mentioned because when I come across those things, I'm just flabbergasted. There's people out there in the tender, tender stage two of recovery thinking that they can purchase a stage three garment and not only be comfortable, but be protected. And that is not accurate. It's just not. And I can't tell you how many thousands of dolls have DM'd me crying that, <laughs> that they thought they were ready for a stage three garment, so that's what they ordered. So today I wanna to talk about a couple things. I wanna talk about cost. I wanna talk about um, how it's made and the difference between a stage, let's, let's not even get into like one and one and a half. Let's just go straight up, straight, stage two and stage three. I'll, if, if there's any comparisons in this video, I'll compare a stage three to a stage two. So I wanna talk about cost, I wanna talk about manufacturing and how the materials differ from stage three to stage two. I wanna talk about whether or not I think it's worth it. So first off, right off the bat, stage three garments are, <laughs> I was gonna say extremely expensive or much more expensive than a stage two. And you might not have that experience, but I did. And every stage three garment that I've ever seen is marked up much higher than a stage two garment. It is um, a lot more pricey. Um, and out of the three stage three garments I had, I couldn't tell you why. Couldn't tell you why, to be honest. Um, so there's that. It's, it's more expensive and let's just, set that on the shelf for the rest of the video. Maybe we'll come back to that. And so the manufacturing, I, <laughs> in my experience, stage three garments have uh, latex inside the, the waist part um, of the garment. And I, I, could, I really, I don't know where this originated. I don't know where this started. Um, I mean, there's been latex in waist trainers for decades, probably even centuries. So I, I mean, maybe I don't even know when latex was made, so maybe not centuries, but definitely not a new concept. I received my first stage three garment when I was four months post-op. So I was 16 weeks post-op, 16 weeks post-op, still very numb, still very much swelling. When I tried to put that garment on, it felt like I was trying to squeeze myself into a tin can. It was very difficult to breathe. It's constricting in a way that not, not only compresses your skin and your outer tissue, but it compressed my ribs and my lungs so much to a point that I couldn't comfortably sleep. Okay, I'm not gonna get into all of like how I felt in my garment because I don't wanna sway your your decision. I mean, you are here to see what my opinion is on a stage three garment, but I also want to give you a lot of facts. And I want to make this video mostly fact-based because I really just can't stand when people throw out like nothing but their opinion and try to get people to, I don't know, follow their lead. And, and that's not what I'm doing. I'm here to educate you. Anyway, it's got latex in the garment. Let me back up a little bit because there's a lot of confusion in styles of garments. And actually, here's a great analogy. Let's think about a faja as lingerie. It's not, clearly. I mean, it could be if you're into that kind of thing. But in the same way that lingerie has different styles, shapes, colors, designs, patterns, materials, finishing touches, accessories, a faja will also, and a lot of companies nowadays are getting really adventurous with their uh, styles, their materials, the designs, the fabric, the colors, the patterns. Um, and so I think comparing it to lingerie is the best that I can do. So prime example, a bra with underwire and a bra without. 
is the same damn thing as a faha with rods or boning and a faha without. There is no harm to your breast unless you've literally just come out of surgery by wearing underwire. There is also no harm to your body by wearing a faha that has rods or boning in it. And this is probably one of the most heated discussions and debates when it comes to stage two garments. And I know this is a stage three video, but this is important because some stage two garments do have rods or boning in it. The rods and the boning, its only purpose is to mitigate the creasing in the garment. When you sit down, you have creasing in your pants. I have creasing right here. The same thing happens with a faha. And when you think about how tight and compressive a faha is, when you sit, all of those creases, one, can be really uncomfortable, two, um, could start rubbing up against your skin, and when we're really numb in an area that um, vast and that, and that, you know, that large of a surface area has that much numbness, we won't be able to tell that that garment is rubbing from the creasing and that's a great way to get faha burn. So a lot of people are also really concerned about creasing in their garment when they sit. So number one, to avoid that, wear an, uh, an ab board every single time you have your faha on. Put your ab board in. Not only will it help mitigate the creasing, but it will also help firm and flatten your belly. It will encourage the loose skin to retract and will get your stomach uh, to a flatter place or a place more flat um, than it would be without wearing the ab board. So I mentioned all that to say that the manufacturing in stage, stage three garments um, can differ from a stage two. Um, yes, some stage two garments can have rods and boning in them. It depends on the company. So you really just, if you're looking at one company, you cannot compare, and this goes for all Fahas and all stages. If you're looking at one company and what they offer in their different stage garments, you cannot compare that to another company. For example, I know for a fact that one company offers rods and boning in their stage two garments, but another company that actually uses the very same manufacturer and materials and makes their garments the exact same way does not use rods and boning in their stage two. So first things first, make sure that you stick, I'm not saying stick with one company, um, but when you're looking at the details of how a garment is made and the certain styles and how the stages, stages differ from each other, don't compare this company's stage blank garment to this company's stage blank garment. That's first up. Back to what I was saying, some companies will have rods and boning in their stage, th stage two garments. A lot of companies will also have rods and boning in their stage three garments. In the same vein, some companies do not have rods and boning in their stage three garments. Some companies might have latex in their stage three garment. Some companies might not have latex in their stage three garment. In any case, no matter what the style or, or the attributes that the garment has in that particular company, a stage three is for the most part and in most cases going to be a much, much higher compression. It's going to be much, much more restrictive. It's gonna be more expensive than a stage two. That said, I wanna I want to talk about my experience with the three that I had. So I got my first one when I was 16 weeks post-op. I already talked a little bit about how very uncomfortable it was. Got my second one about six, or eight weeks later and then got the third one probably about the same amount of time after that and in all cases I can strongly and firmly and honestly say I didn't see the hype about the stage three I just didn't I had a really good I had several really good custom-made stage two garments here's my opinion Let's, let's set the experience to the side for a second. I don't want to talk about my unbiased opinion. Well, <laughs> it can't be unbiased because it was also my experience, but here's my opinion. 
If you get a quality stage two garment, your measurements are accurate, the garment comes in and, and it's made correctly, fits you right, and it's the uh, appropriate level of compression for the stage that your body is currently in, um, and it's the right ratio to your hips and waist and all that good stuff. That's how your garment should fit. And that, that how it feels in that first week that you put it on, that is how your garment should fit for the entirety of your recovery. That's it. That's everything you need to know about Faja sizing and when it's time to upgrade or when it's time to, you know, re-up or tailor your garment or get a new one or whatever the case may be. Everything you need to know about stage two and stage three garments is that how it fits in the first week that you get it is how it should, if, if it fits appropriately, is how it should fit for the entire rest of your recovery. Now that's not always gonna be possible because it's a garment and a garment is going to stretch, it's gonna give, it's gonna get loose, it's gonna get washed, it's going to continue to get worn out the more that you wear it. And when we're wearing something every single day, that shit can happen pretty quickly. So it's not possible for this same garment to fit you the same way for the entirety of your recovery, especially when your body is changing, you're moving through different stages of recovery, your trauma is lessening, and your swelling is decreasing. Your body is not staying the same size. You will lose inches. That garment will eventually not fit. So it's a really, really tricky process to try and keep up with the changes in your body and make sure that that garment stays snatching you. So it's a very delicate line and like a very difficult dance to do with that garment. So what I found really helpful was to stagger my garments. I'm kind of getting off topic here a little bit, but I'm kind of setting you up for my opinion on stage three Fajas. And my opinion is that they are a fucking scam. They are a fucking scam and a waste of time and money. Here's the bottom line, babes, and this is based on my experience. If I continue to stay in a proper fitting stage two garment for the entirety of my recovery, and I'm gonna say that again because I kind of stuttered a little bit and I like slurred my words a little bit. If I continue to stay in a properly fitted stage two garment for the entirety of my recovery from the moment I got my stage two through a year post-op, I would have achieved the same results, if not better, because I never wanted to wear my stage three than I would have if I, if I purchased the stage three. And so here's the thing. Um, I got a couple stage threes, and so I didn't want to invest in another stage two. Funds are not unlimited, you know? I know you feel me. Uh, and since I had the stage threes, I was like, well, I gotta wear these. And then every time I put them on, I was like, I don't wanna wear these. So I most definitely spent less time in my garment than I would have liked to, or probably should have, because the discomfort of the stage three deterred me from wanting to wear it. And this is the biggest thing that I stress to people when they book a consultation with me. So here's a, here's a couple questions that I've gotten in the last few consultations or some very popular questions that I get in consultations. Um, I was really religious with my faja and I wore it uh, for four months straight um, and then I stopped wearing a faja at all. I'm now a year post-op. If I get a stage three or another stage two, will my results snap back or can I can I change my results at this point? And my answer to that is, um, I hate to say it, but my answer to that is usually likely not. I don't ever give a hard yes or a hard no because you can't. 
in uh, the surgery world. You really can't. Even doctors can't give you a firm yes or a firm no. Um, it, it really is contingent upon so many things. Your body, your skin retraction, your diet, your uh, behavior and lifestyle choices, you know, the way that your body responds to trauma, the way that your body recovers from trauma, the way that you're, you know, whether or not you've been, you've been pregnant, um, there's so many things to consider. You ask questions in general about your recovery after surgery. But when we're specifically talking about whether or not you can manipulate or change your results beyond a year post-op, likely not. You're gonna get to a certain point where your body is no longer in the recovery stages and it's, it is what it is. Like you've gotten to that point, like, I'm sure lots of people who are like diehard garment and, and diehard waist trainer are gonna come for me, but you like really can't manipulate your body to an extreme. That's why surgery exists. Another question that I get a lot and which I'm gonna tie into, you know, my experience with being deterred from wearing the garment was that um, I had someone who came to me for a consultation and Again, she wore her faha religiously for the first four months of recovery, slowly started tapering off, and then by six months post-op, she wasn't wearing anything. Um, and I actually think that's fine, like if she felt like she was at a place where she did think she could start tapering off and like wanted to test the waters, like th all of the information that I give y'all is guidance and um, you do with it what you will. Uh, I just wanna make sure that you're totally educated and make the best educated decision for yourselves. Um, but then by eight months post-op, she had gained inches, gained weight, and still felt like she was swelling. And so she wanted to get back in the faha. To me, that's a really big indication that you're still in recovery stages. Likely she was in stage three at this point. Um, and she wanted to know whether or not it would make a difference if she got a faha. So the reason that I'm mentioning these Q and A's is because um, I was consistent with my garment through 10, 11 months post-op. I know, I know based on what was happening to my body and, and the changes that I saw occur, I know that if I stopped wearing my garment prior to that or any sooner than that, that I would not have achieved the results that I did. And so I say all of that to say that because I was deterred from wearing the stage three garment, I missed some of that time that I could have experienced if I was consistent in a stage two that fit me properly. Do you get what I'm saying? Do you see the dots that I'm connecting? I hope it's coming across the way that I mean for it too because had I just used a stage two all the way for the entirety of my recovery, I probably would have had slightly better results to be honest with you. Um, I mean, we can't say, who knows? Maybe I wouldn't have. But my point is, in all of that, is that I just think that all the bells and whistles on a stage three are a little scammy. The fact that they're way more expensive than a stage two, maybe not way more, okay? Like, don't pick apart my words, but they're, they're pricier than a stage two, hands down. They're gonna be more money no matter what company you go with. Some companies might be cheaper than others, but I guarantee you when you stick with one company like I was talking about before, their stage three is gonna be more expensive than their stage two. Their stage two is gonna be more expensive than their stage one. Do I think stage three garments are worth it? Not really, not really. When and if I get a second BBL, I will not get a stage three garment. Who knows if I'll try the ones that I have? Can't say but I know I will not be purchasing one. That is for shit sure. For shit sure. And the reason that I make these videos is because I have exposure to a lot of people's recoveries. I have had great exposure to a great many number of different experiences. And across the board, if I'm being honest, I can tell you with certainty that I've never really seen ever I can't say even really I've never seen anyone 
who thought the stage three was a game changer. So for me, in a journey like this, huge life decision as this one is, I want a game changing experience. I don't know about you, but I want a game changing experience. And for all of the reasons that I've, that I've explained here in this video today, through the experience that I had with the stage three garments that I had, through the experience that I had with the stage two garments that I have, I just don't see how or why a stage three garment could be a game changing experience. And I base this on the way the body continues to change through the second and third stage of recovery, the attributes to the garments and the differences between the stage two and the stage three within whatever company I'm getting them from. And then both of those factors combine, like the attributes combined with how the body changes, it's just the latex really provides no benefit in my opinion. All it does is add discomfort. Yes, it certainly adds a greater level of compression and here's probably what a lot of people are looking for. If you're wearing a properly fitted stage two, beyond the level of compression that your body needs to make any change whatsoever, it's almost the same concept as wearing a garment in general beyond 12 months. Once you get to that like stopping point of that level of compression that your body needs, there's like, <laughs> there's like a limit. Really anything beyond that is just like discomfort and and adds no benefit medically or otherwise to the body. I really, I think I'm gonna end the video because I'm just going on and on at this point and saying the same thing that I've said before in different ways. Um, now you know my opinion on stage three, uh, worth it or waste, fucking waste. Uh, do what you will. I am the type of person that needs to go out and do my own research also a reason why I make all these videos and, and keep my page up and continue to do what I do and created this book in the first place is because I do research. I like to gather as much data as possible. I like to try all of the products. I like to, you know, shop around and, and get different prices. And, you know, at one point in my early stages of recovery, I, I told my followers, I was like, listen, consider me your personal, personal shopper, y'all. Like I will go out there, try five different ad boards and tell you what I think about all these ad boards collectively. And then you make the decision that's best for you. Like I'll try these BBL pillows and let you know which one was the best and which one was the, you know, the best value for your money and the best quality based on that, that value and how it's made, whatever. I need to do the research and I need to gather all the data before I make a decision. And, you know, if that's you, um, take what I've said into consideration. Uh, really think about, you know, how financially fit you are and what position you are in to uh, do your own research um, and let me know what you come up with. I'm really interested to see what people have to say in the comments of this video. General consensus in the surgery community is that a stage three is a waste. So let me know what your experience has been with a stage three. Comment below and let me know if you're beyond a year post-op, did you have a stage three garment? What did you think of it? How did it differ from your stage two? And what was your experience? Uh, the more comments that we get on my videos of other people's experiences, just that much more educated will future viewers of my videos be. Um, so I welcome all comments with all different experiences. If you love the stage three, even better. My, my opinion is that I think it's a scam and I think it's a waste, um, but I would love to see reasons why people thought the stage three was actually uh, a reasonable value and um, worth the purchase. So again, please comment, let me know what your experience was. And also if I didn't answer anybody's question today in this video, I'm sure I missed something. Um, there's just so much information on these topics. I, I don't always hit 100%. Please leave your question in the comments and I'm sure I will leave you a full paragraph of an answer because 
I can't leave any details out. Um, so that's what you're in for if you leave me a comment. Regardless, thanks so much for taking time to watch my video and hang out with me for a little bit. Again, if we don't know each other, introduce yourself, say hi, let me know what's up with your journey, and let's connect. Wishing you nothing but happiness, health, and safety on your journey. Thanks, babes. Bye. Fucking see ya.